Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 17 part 3a evolution. In this particular part we're going to talk about evolution, what is it and the molecular evidence for evolution. Now we don't learn this but there's actually more evidence for evolution out there. It's not in syllabus. I'm going to link you a YouTube video to it. Okay, um, we're going to talk about speciation and extinction in the video after this. So, um, let's talk about evolution. Now, in the first particular video for this chapter, we learned that evolution is the idea that organisms change over time. Again, we're not really talking about individual changing of time, like Pokemon. Okay, we're not talking about that. We're talking about populations of organisms changing over time. Now, these are a few main ideas that may help you get a better idea of what evolution is. The main idea is species have evolved over time from pre-existing species. Now, let me explain this a little bit um, by using this diagram down here. This diagram down here okay, uh, represents monkey becoming man. And this is the common illustration when it comes to evolution. But actually, it's slightly misleading because in reality, the monkey didn't upgrade like a Pokemon into men like it didn't upgrade like five times to become a legendary pokemon or whatever okay it didn't it is actually um a very very long process that took thousands and thousands of years and maybe each generation of monkey right i would wouldn't say monkey actually i would say ape like creature okay and the ape would learn one thing new each generation and over time those small small changes accumulate and therefore we have human beings so this takes thousands and thousands of years and we're not talking about individuals as we're saying we're talking about populations different generations changing over time okay so that's the concept Number two, organisms are descended from a common ancestor. So again, this is not a monkey. This is an ape-like ancestor. So this is probably an ape. Okay, and we can say that monkeys came from the same common ancestor. Okay, the more closely related the species is, the more recent the common ancestor. We don't really know what a common ancestor may be. We can form a few hypotheses, but... Um, more, the more closely we are, the more recent common ancestor. For example, us and monkeys, again, very recent common ancestor. Relative to me and a cockroach, we are very different, very, very different in physiology, in everything. And therefore, our common ancestor might be really, really, really far away. Maybe like a little cell very far away okay so that's the idea now let's talk about natural selection how does natural selection genetic drift and all these tie into evolution so these things are just a mechanism to explain how evolution can occur so evolution is just change over time it could be small changes big changes they're all evolution how does that change occur Natural selection could be a mechanism, genetic drift can be a mechanism, artificial selection can also be a mechanism, as it can also change allele frequencies. All these fellas, all these three things, change allele frequencies. And there is more, actually. There's more things that can change allele frequencies. You just don't learn all of them. Okay, so that's the main idea. Now, many of you will be like okay so where's the evidence for this now we are learning the molecular evidence here um and this is found in the amino acid sequences of protein and number two the mitochondrial dna in short we call it mtdna um there's more evidence other than this and i'm going to link you a video in the description i hope you're going to watch it i find it very interesting i don't know about you so let's start with the evidence number one amino acid sequences of proteins now this is a process where we compare, you take two species, you take their amino acid sequence for maybe a particular protein. In this case, it's the opticin proteins. Based on the name, you can probably guess that it's found in your eye. Optical, opticin, right? So compare this two amino acid sequence, and you realize that the more similar the amino acid sequences it is, the more closely related the species. Huh. So, you can see here that monkey 
mouse, duck, red dog, cow, pig, duck, okay, all these mammals and yeah, they all share a very similar amino acid sequence. Okay, there's a few few differences here and there, but very similar and the more closely related, the more similar it is. Whereas a frog, uh, scientific name Xenopus, right, a frog has a very very different amino acid sequence zebra fish very, very different amino acid sequence from human beings that's because they are more distantly related okay more similar amino acid sequence means less time has elapsed since the most recent common ancestor so humans and monkey we share a more recent common ancestor but humans and frog Okay, our most recent common ancestor is a really, really long time ago. So, let's do one more. One more example. For example, you take cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is an electron carrier in the electron transport chain. Okay, um, you can see here the mitochondrial membrane. Okay, a little diagram here for you, very cute. And um, this is a protein. And it's very highly conserved, which means it's very similar across many different species. Okay, and um, we can see this protein in rats and in mouse and in humans. So we realize that the length and amino acid sequence of protein are identical in the rat and the mouse. And that's to be expected because they're very similar organisms. But the human cytochrome C has nine amino acids that are different from them. Okay, again, it's highly conserved, means usually it stays the same because it's a very, very important protein. But human has nine amino acids different, that means it's quite different. And so we can say mouse and rat share a more recent common ancestor, they are more closely related, whereas humans are more distantly related. The recent common ancestor, more, most recent common ancestor, is very far away. And therefore, we can draw a little, um, little evolutionary tree like this okay you can see that mouse and rat okay it didn't branch off so far ago whereas humans branch off um, further away okay so we can say that hey mouse and human far away this is time so is how about human and fish even further away so the idea is okay in evolution that there are all life started with a few organisms a cell maybe and it's sort of over thousands and thousands of years changed and evolved in many many different ways resulting in many 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 different types of organisms that's why we see it this way so let's move on to the next evidence for evolution again this is molecular evidence Okay, and this is using mitochondrial DNA. So this is where we take two species, we take their mitochondrial DNA and we compare the nucleotide sequence, so the DNA sequence in the mitochondria. Right. The idea is very similar. The less difference it is, the less difference in nucleotide sequence, the more closely related. The less difference in nucleotide sequence means there are fewer mutations, means less time has elapsed since the last common uh, ancestor. Okay, so yeah, right. The question here is why mitochondrial DNA? Why not nuclear DNA? Wouldn't that make more sense? Well, mitochondrial DNA actually has a few special characteristics, and this is what you need to know. Number one, it's circular and it's in the mitochondria, so it does not undergo crossing over in the same way that the nuclear DNA does. Mutations occur at a relatively constant rate across different organisms and can act as a molecular clock so if you detect more differences means more mutations that occur means more time has passed it's a molecule that shows time therefore molecular clock it's a nickname that scientists have given it um, number three mitochondrial dna oops spelling error here DNA mutates faster than nuclear DNA. This arises only by mutation though and are not repaired. Huh, 
Very interesting, right? So in nuclear DNA, mutations may arise, but it may be repaired by the mechanisms, and is not associated. And in the nuclear DNA, it's associated with histones, so they are quite protected. However, in mitochondrial DNA, this is not so. To add on to that, oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria can produce reactive oxygen species, ROS, okay, which can act as mutagens, so it mutates faster. So it tells time more accurately in that sense. Number four, it has smaller, it has a few genes. So analysis of this mitochondrial DNA is quicker. I'm sorry, I should have changed this to DNA. It's a typo. And number five, last but not least, mitochondrial DNA is passed from mother to offspring. Only. Nuclear DNA is inherited from all your ancestors, but mitochondrial DNA is only from the mom. Your mitochondria, your siblings' mitochondria, are all from your mom. Okay, so it's easy to track and it's less confusing in general. So, ta da! That's why we use mitochondrial DNA. And that's it for this video. Very short. Again, these are molecular evidences. This is not all the evidence out there for evolution. Feel free to watch this YouTube video in the description box below so that you can gain more information. But it's not examined. It is not. So yeah, have fun. See you in the next video. Bye.